Hello and welcome to Channel's Book Club. I am Olakunle Kasumo. In today's episode, our focus is on this book titled A Platter of Gold, written by Shukpo Shashore, a lawyer and former Attorney General and Commissioner of Justice for Lagos State, southwest of Nigeria. The book is about the making of Nigeria. It tells the intriguing story of how Nigeria was colonized by the British, the colonial officers who were prominent in the colonization process, the critical events that led to agitation and ultimately independence, and the many under-celebrated Nigerians who stood up for Nigerian rights and ensured the country's freedom. In the book, the reader is introduced to many unknown heroes of Nigeria who deserve to be mentioned in every home today because they paid great prizes for Nigeria's freedom. Together with Aduke Gomez, a lawyer, writer, and keen historian, we join Shupo Shashore to explore his book, A Platter of Gold. But let's start with the author reading from it. I'm reading from my latest book, A Platter of Gold. I'm reading the part about the making of the Northern Territory and the scene where Lugard is preparing to an onslaught on the Sokoto Caliphate. In Lugard's men, confidence was high. They had the game changer, the Maxim gun. The Maxim was the new wave high technology of its day. Invented by Sir Hiram Stevens Maxim in 1883, it was a devastating advantage in the warfare of the 19th century. The Maxim could fire 600 rounds per minute. It therefore could allow a relatively smaller army deplete a larger cavalry of the bravest warriors. Lugard knew and loved the weapon immensely. He had used its prototype in Central Africa and Uganda and was convinced that it would work successfully in his mission to subdue northern Nigeria. It was going to be put to the best use in Sokoto. Sultan Atahiru had made it clear to Lugard that the British were not welcome. He was not prepared to surrender his territory to a foreign control. Atahiro had replied Lugard's call to surrender with appropriate hostility. From us to you, I do not consent that anyone from you should ever dwell with us. I will never agree with you. I will have nothing ever to do with you. Between us and you, there are no dealings except as between Muslims and unbelievers. War, as God Almighty has joined on us, will prevail. There is no power or strength save in God on high. This with salutations. Sokoto was arguably the most important territory in British, in, in British northernward expansion plans. They had taken the smaller emirates. In Sokoto and its sultan remained outside con British control, there could easily be two governors, one British, one Fulani. One undermining the other, Lugard could not risk the authority of the Sultan to reign free. It was the 14th of March 1903, as a column of the expeditionary force advanced. They caught the Caliphate headquarters in the horizon. They were met by the majestic sight of the Sultan's army of 15,000 mounted cavalry and 3,000 footmen, resplendent in their armor and formations. They were no longer the ragtag knit army that had brought down the Hausa state of Gobiri under Shewu Danfodio. They too had now grown large and disconnected with the cause. The footmen were strategically placed across the approach to the Atikule gate and the Sokoto state city beyond. Atahiru was putting up a defiant last stand. Atahiru had only become the Sultan of the Caliphate in October 1902 but he was well aware what he needed to do to preserve a semblance of independence for the Caliphate. They must defend the ancient city home, home city with every last drop of blood. This was the message to the faithful. One of the faithful, Malam Nagawashi, re related his personal experience. On Saturday, the 11th day of Zulhaj, the month of March in 1903, the Muslims advanced to the banks of the stream and there halted and made ready for battle. The Waziri and a few others were killed that night in a preliminary engagement. By the morning of the 12th, a Sunday, and by about 9 a.m., they had risen 
such a cloud of dust that everyone sought water to drink. The Sultan had taken up positions under a palm tree. Bullets were falling like rain. And soon his horse was shot from under him. Another was brought to him to mount. On that day, the British killed. Bullets were falling like rain. The onslaught was awful. Hundreds lost their lives at the 15th, at the 15th March battle. As, at, as Sultan Atahiru fled with many soldiers and others, Sokoto fell to the British. Yet Lugard was not satisfied. He pursued Atahiru to Burni, far away in the Bauchi district, where the last stand would take place on the 27th of July. It was there, along the Gongola River, that the Sultan was killed during battle, along with the Mogaji Kefi and hundreds of other faithful. But from the Battle of March 1903, the Danfodio Caliphate would never be the same again, existing sometimes in name, but like much of traditional Nigeria, without any independence. Shubo Shashare, thank you for, you are hosting us today, so <laughs> nice to be with you today. And um, Aduke, nice to have you here. Always a pleasure for me. Great. Now, a platter of gold. My own first impression, really good book. I think the standout thing for me in your book is that uh, perhaps for the first time, my focus shifted from the Awolowas and the Namdiazikwis and the Baliwas and the, the, the other famous stars, if you know what I mean, who, who we usually credit with the founding of Nigeria. Um, they call them the founding fathers of Nigeria. Um, and then I, I began to see a lot of very ordinary people who were great heroes when it comes to the making of Nigeria. I found that very interesting, and very fascinating. Um, but that's my first impression. I'm going to be asking you your impression. But b before we get started fully, um, what inspired you to write A Platter of Gold? I, I can't say what inspired me. I, I write history, um, and I guess the inspiration for writing history is um, to unearth, to discover more about the identity of the people of this part of the country, a part of the world. Um, Nigerian history has always intrigued me because for growing up, it was largely hidden from us in the sense that we didn't really have this level of in-depth knowledge about Nigeria and its making as we did about other countries, for instance, Britain and America and, and the world wars that we were all drilled with in, in, in our history curriculum. So that's probably where the original inspiration came from. But this particular book is a result of the investigation into the colony of Lagos. So really, this is an, a continuing um, story of the creation of Nigeria, and which I think started with Lagos.